Hello, I'm Phil Nash, Developer Advocate for Sealine. Now, summer's here again, and that means Sealine 2019.2 is out, and I'd love to take you through some of what's new. The action all starts in the editor, where we have some huge new features. Have you ever been jealous of languages like Swift or Python that support names or labels for parameters, making some code much more readable? Well, we may get that one day in C++, but in the meantime, Sealine fills the gap by now offering parameter hints. Now you can see the parameter names at call sites, all without changing anything in the code. Now not all parameters show this way, there is a heuristic to try and keep this from being too noisy, and if need be you can turn it off in settings. But we're sure you're going to want to keep this one enabled. What's especially cool is that this even works through variadic forwarding templates, like std make unique. Now you might have noticed that these includes at the top are greyed out. That's because the unused includes inspection is back on by default. We previously disabled this as it tended to give false positives, but has now been completely reworked and is better than ever. There are now three levels to choose from. The default, detect not directly used, is probably what you want most of the time. This follows the strategy of the include what you use principle, where source files should include exactly the headers that contain the symbols used in that source file rather than relying on transitively included headers. Now we're not here providing full include what you use functionality, we're just not marking headers as unused if they're also included transitively, as is the case here. If you do want the more permissive behaviour, you can use detect not required. This will show includes as unused if they're already included transitively. And the other option, detect completely unused, is the most conservative and only warns if the header is completely unused in the translation unit. And our integration of Clang Tidy has also been updated to the latest version, bringing with it a raft of new inspections. Now, next, naming is hard, but following naming conventions doesn't have to be. We've extended the naming conventions feature we added in the last release with a new, more powerful UI. We can now scope specific conventions to certain visibility levels or by cons qualification. If you need to use more than one rule per entity, you can add additional lines. We've also added two additional naming styles, upper snake case and leading snake case. This is also a big release for syntax highlighting and code completion. As well as C and C++, we've long supported a handful of other languages in C line through plugins, for example Rust, Swift and Python. But in this release we're now adding built-in support for syntax highlighting and additional 20 languages all in one go. Now we're doing this using text make grammars, so you could even add your own. And Clang format files now benefit from completions, as well as other code assistance such as documentation pop-ups and even validates against the built-in JSON schema. And we also now have support for highlighting and completions in shell scripts using a new bundled plugin. You can even use the rename refactoring. And even the debug console now includes completions too, with tab or control space. You might say the completion story in C-Line is now complete. Talking of the debugger, we have some big news for MSVC users. We're now including an initial version of our new debugger for code built using the MSVC compiler. This debugger is built on LLDB and is currently still considered experimental, so please keep that in mind and be sure to report any issues you encounter. But there's still more debugger news, and for all platforms, the breakpoint icon now gives more information about whether a breakpoint is resolvable. Once the debug session is started, it will either show a little tick to indicate it's now an active resolved breakpoint, or you'll see this icon if it's not resolvable and therefore will never fire. This could happen for a few reasons, such as missing symbols, or if it's just not on a reachable or valid line of code. And the memory viewer, which we introduced recently, is expanded with a go to address feature, as well as an ASCII view. In the last release, we added initial support for many embedded platforms with open OCD integration. Now we're taking it much further with two major enhancements. First, we're extending the debugging integration to anything that supports GDB server. To set this up, you create a run config for embedded GDB server, 
tell it where the GDB server you want to use is installed, set up its command line to use the appropriate config, and to run on a specific port. Then make sure that port is used for the target remote arcs. There are also some advanced options, including what the reset command should do. Now, when you start the debugger, it will run it via the GDB server you set up, and all your usual debug features are available, except that there is now one more debugger feature. Whether you're using GDB server or OpenOCD download and run, you'll now see a new peripherals tab. If you haven't already given it an SVD file, you'll be prompted to do so here. This is a config describing your MCU peripherals. Once you have one, just tell CLine where it is, and then which peripherals you'd like to see, and you're ready to go. Now, as you debug, the peripherals view will update automatically, highlighting changed values. If this is too slow, you can disable automatic updates, and instead manually refresh. You can search for specific values just by typing, and you can switch the visualization between hex, decimal, octal, or binary. You can also export and import as CSV, and even load multiple SVD files. Improving performance continues to be a priority for us, and in this release we've quashed many more lags and freezes, improved raw performance in some areas, and reduced I.O. operations in some others. On Windows we also specifically detect the case where file I.O. is being slowed down by Windows Defender, and can even automatically fix that by excluding the relevant directories. The bundled CMake moves to 3.14.5. Manual changes to compilation DB files now prompt to reload, and offer to make them automatic. And for remote projects, external changes are now automatically synced, not just those made within the IDE. As a shared component across all of our IDEs, we've picked up many new VCS features, as always. But just to point out one that many will find particularly welcome, for projects in Git or Mercurial, you can now commit straight from the local changes view, without having to open the modal commit dialog. This is simpler, less intrusive, and means you don't have to close the dialog if you need to interact with the rest of the IDE before you commit. For now, this functionality must be enabled here in the settings. For our Rust users, the Rust plugin continues to gain new features and improve existing ones. Introduced recently is the ability to expand declarative macros, this can be done just for a single level, or for more complex macros, you can do it recursively. Talking of macros, Code Pass to Macros now has full syntax highlighting, completions, and refactoring support. We can also detect duplicate code blocks and have a number of other new intentions and quick fixes. So that's a taste of CLine 2019.2. If you don't already have it, you can download a 30 day free trial. See the site for more details. And as ever, thanks for watching.